On back to back, we put a curfew on them. It was dark clouds on us, but that was perfect for us. You know, you always crash and burn, but it was working for us. I'm on 10 to B12. Double check the details. I cross my. I don't even know where to begin. I've been driving three hours, two hours or something, I don't know. So the last vlog, I talked about going to New Mexico to register my car and just like whatever, like just talking about going to New Mexico and talking to my friend Trey, who's like my mentor, probably the only real father figure I've had in the last 10 years. I don't really get along with my own father, so Trey's always been sort of the guy that I call to just get guidance. Like he's just my OG, man. Like he, he, he knows what's up. Like when I don't know what to do, he knows what to do. And uh, yeah, so I've been talking with his wife over the last couple of days about this car situation and like possibly opening a little like just an LLC in uh, New Mexico. Been like real casual over the past couple of days and then last night she called me at like 8.40. Didn't really feel like talking about the car and was gonna call her back. And then she called back at nine and was just in hysterics. And uh, I mean, long story short, man, Trey, Trey passed away yesterday, like just, he, he, I mean, assuming a heart attack, um, and it like maybe, I don't know, seven o'clock last night. So I literally have just been in my head in my room for the last two, three days. Trey's actually the person that told me to take some days off. Like when I talked to Trey and he's like, you should take some days off. You should take the whole weekend off, take those days off. And now it's like, <laughs> I'm coming here and he's gone. And I've been a fucking wreck about it. It's like, I can't even believe I haven't broken down yet talking about it now. I don't know. I, I just smoked a joint. Maybe that's calmed me down somewhat. But like, dude, this is awful. Like, this is absolutely terrible. I don't even know. I feel so bad for Lizzie, his wife. Like, I don't even know where to start. I feel bad for myself, which is so fucking selfish. But it's like, Trey's like only fucking one, man. And then now he's gone. It's like he was a really big part of this whole thing, you know. Like Trey believed in me before anybody, be like when I didn't even believe in myself. Always encouraging, always saw like more in me than I still see today. Even the conversation we had the other day was all praise, advice, and praise, and but never like you should do this. It's just like made me believe in myself. You know, he's like my coach, bro. Like my coach is gone. One fucking like two days ago, we're talking planning talking about the future he's got a wine company he wants me to want me to do some stuff with we're talking about property in new mexico tattoo shop it's insane man life is just so fucking insane so quick and fragile and bullshit and beautiful at the same time like my god i don't know where to start i don't know where to finish i just know i have to get there i, I gotta get up there so we're like an hour away the car's barely gonna make it we have 91 miles to go and 107 miles on the there's not a charger between here and there we're fucked if we don't make it and we probably should just start driving yeah the last uh i'd say 20 12 hours or so, 16 hours has been a fucking nightmare, dude. And I don't even know what to do. Like, I don't wanna vlog this, obviously. This is not easy, but I feel like this is also important. A lot of people who hit me up, we, we talk about things like death. This is part of it with all the cool shit and all the great stuff and all the art and all the jokes and cutting up and whatever the fuck it is that we do, man. Like, this is like, at the end of the day, the harsh reality. Out of fucking nowhere, dude. Out of nowhere, and I don't even know why I called him the other day. I I had no reason to call him. I just felt compelled to call him and I called him, you know, and we had a really good talk and I'm really fucking grateful for that. I'm so grateful that we had a really nice, long, casual, just talk about life. But at the same time, I'm so fucking mad that I don't get any more now. Ugh. That's good. There's a free charging station over here. This is not a supercharger. <laughs> Six hours, five minutes. recording in slow motion but a dog just <laughs> ran into the back of the 
house. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. But um, yeah, that's New Mexico. Well, that's Taos. I also woke up to a dog in my car, like in the driver's seat, because I am so out of it and just not present and just honestly trying to remember my last conversation with Trey word for word that I'm just not I, like simple shit like shutting the car door doesn't happen. Thankfully, that doesn't kill the battery for the Tesla. I don't need to have a dead battery out here in the desert. Not a good, not a good look. So this is a casita. This whole vibe is crazy. Literally just trying to, my, my relationship here is so different, I guess. Like, I was really struggling when I came. This story is just so nuts. When I came here, I was running away from Denver because nothing was working out. Jay, who's now in jail, was being Jay. We had to leave. Came out here because I met Trey. Basically, my friend was working at this tattoo shop here, and Trey was piercing at the shop, and piercing is just the way that he coast through the rest of his life you know he does a lot of shit a lot of art related things and production things and managing but he did piercing like in the 80s so it's something he could always do yeah so we like just worked at this shop that ended up while i was here going under essentially because the owner was an idiot trey was letting me stay at his house like literally after two days was just like i'm staying in my house and then we started smoking weed hanging out he is the person who introduced me to damn near everything i know about new mexico him and my friend jesse bob are the two it's just crazy like there's so many things about it there's so many emotions like it's really sad selfishly i'm gonna i'm so upset that my coach is gone you know what i'm saying like i don't i'm an uncoachable player but trey understood that i was always able to hit him up if i got to a problem not a lot of people I look to for advice when I get in a predicament. I usually just find my own way, but Trey just, I don't know. Like something about us, we just connected, man. Like that dude just, cause he didn't really get advice that told you what to do. He would just tell you his experience. The man had so many experiences. Like he lived a hundred lives. Really the knowledge, like the saddest part to me is all the knowledge that the man had. That shit's just gone. It's like surreal, man. Like everything about it is surreal. Cause I was headed up here and I hadn't been here in so long and it forced me to come here. Now I'm here under these fucking awful conditions and then I find myself being like enjoying certain things or being reminded of certain things uh, like the simplicity here and the energy that surrounds this place it makes me reflect on we came here we didn't have shit like we didn't have anything I couldn't even afford one of these a place smaller than this working at that tattoo shop struggling to get it off the ground by the time we actually got it off the ground I was so crazy that I just left I got so mad at everybody but Trey and Lizzie that I was just like over it and I just wasn't where I needed to be and Trey knew that Trey is the one that pushed me like Trey's the only person that I've ever met that would look at me and just be like you deserve more you're not getting what you deserve we need to figure out a way to get you what you deserve literally been his mantra to me for uh, since I've known it this shit sucks like this shit absolutely sucks and I've cried and I've cried and I'll cry some more you gotta swim in it man like I tried so hard to run away from this waking up from tears like, crying in my fucking sleep coming here feeling Trey's energy still and this incredible sadness and whatever lesson there is here. I, I don't know what new lesson this is or I can feel it though, or I can see the contrast and the life that I would have been able to build success. You know, very, I, I'm like very fortunate now that even to be able to drive here, like I was a wreck yesterday and the fact that the Tesla sells drives, I'm obviously paying attention. The fact that I can set the car to do the thing and I can just focus on thinking about what the fuck is going on in my life like my actual life clutch because I'm able to filter through all this shit but the fact that I was even able to come up here and like on a whim like five four or three years two years or three years ago like I wasn't able to do any of this stuff I wouldn't have even been able to be here as a support system after he's gone if it wasn't for him when he was here which is a mind fuck. Dude, I love that motherfucker, man. Like, I love him. I'm incredibly sad by this. Just like keeping it together for the camera because the camera hasn't really been on because a lot of this is not vloggable. Yeah, so I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna head, go charge the car. And then first I'm gonna get a burrito because the funniest, well, there's a couple of funny aspects of this and Trey appreciates the humor. Like, it, we'll get to it. But one thing about this is that the morning I called Trey the other day, had been walking to get breakfast burritos. When I was eating those breakfast burritos, one morning, that morning, I was like, this breakfast burrito reminds me of Taos, this place, Blake's, Lotta Burger. Mm, I should call Trey and see what's up. Funny enough, <laughs> food <laughs> is what got this whole ball rolling in the first place. Appreciative of because it got me to call and proves to me that you never really know what 
each thing means, you know, and our last conversation just seems so serendipitous at this point. You know, the things that he told me that I should do, things that he told me that I'm doing that he thinks are amazing. I got a chance to explain to him the entire trilogy of the Mecha God painting series, and he was like, so mind blown and just going crazy for me and impressed and you know uh, Lizzie told me yesterday that when he got off the phone that he was saying all these things and so excited and the conversation was so big and we were about to move into Theodore and yeah just man heavy shit like literally the next day gone Chaos just has this vibe that is calming it's infuriating when you want to get something done but it's a calming place this is where Trey wanted to be I fucking loved it here this is where he wanted to live. This is where he wanted to die. Oh, only thing I know to do here is turn the camera on and just talk. So, that's where we're at. Yeah, that was Lizzie, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and leave the car charging for all day at this point. Well, first I'm gonna grab a burrito at this burrito place. Then I'm gonna go and eat the burrito in the car while it charges. Charge the car, and then probably just walk from the car to Lizzie's house. You're very cute. Yes. Yes. Yes, you're very, very cute. Your little desert dog. Hmm? Your little desert dog. Oh, big old floppy ears. Oh, look at those big old ears. Okay, I gotta go. I'll see you later, dude. I don't know your name. I'll see you later. Our first L of the day is that they're not serving breakfast anymore. They stop at 11. I didn't either know that or remember it. So we got a burger anyway, because the green chili burger is actually pretty fire. Whataburger. Onions? What the fuck are y'all doing? No one asked for onions? Come on, bro. Gotta check. God damn. Gross. Raw onions? Come on, bro. I don't even see any green chili. I swear to God, they just played me out. Oh, that was green chili. That shit is greasy as fuck. It's good, though. Yeah. We ain't eating all that. Keep in mind, damn, it's good. The breakfast burrito is also really good. Or the breakfast burrito is also really heavy and filling, but it's not, it's worth it. That That's a bur burger. That's a good burger, though, to be honest. I don't know. It might be worth it. <laughs> really good another spot trey turned me on to fire spot trey loved house dude he has all the spots knows everything going on in town probably knows everyone in town and i've been eating like complete shit because stress dog i can't even fucking deal with it i don't care right now i think that's normal i was thinking about it yesterday i was like how the fuck do people go through like morning and try to stick to a diet oh, it's just goofy I mean, goofy as fuck Trey would also think that was goofy. When I stayed with him, I'd wake up and my brain just starts firing shit off. So I'd wake up at the time, roll a joint, start rolling a joint, and then he'd turn on the news. So I would just start commentating on the news, like whatever was going on, and make like my commentary, like I do now, on the internet or in the vlog or whatever. And he would just always be like rolling, dude, like laughing. And that's where he's like, man, he's like, you need your own TV show. In so many ways, Trey inspired the vlog and, you know, instilled the confidence into me that was entertaining. He used to call me a workhorse. You're an earner, you're a workhorse. I don't know I don't know where to put you but you are so producing clothing he showed me these bands that he used to work with and just kind of showed me the distribution they just put me on to shit I didn't know about so shout out to Trey this whole vlog is gonna we're gonna celebrate my man you know like morning is really it comes in waves bro like every 15 minutes I cry and get super upset and the reality hits me and so fucking sad being here and him not being here man if it doesn't like if it doesn't get you to pause you know like life is paused like right now I'm thinking about booking a place for a couple of weeks and coming here instead of going straight to Chicago like maybe I'll just stay here for a couple of weeks get some work done and some peace you know like some real peace I don't know We'll see. We'll see. been a little not crazy or bad or you know 
circumstances are obviously not great, but today's been a lot better. Um, I think less, uh, I would say less hourly emotional than the day prior. People are able to talk more just about Trey's life. Now everybody's sitting around telling stories about Trey and just celebrating how fucking blessed we all are that we got to know him and cool, man, it's cool. One, being around, um, other people that he touched that I don't know, you know, and people who are even closer to him than I am. So I get to hear all of this stuff that I would probably never hear. I feel really fortunate to be friends with Trey. As hard as this is and as much as it sucks, there's so much uh, to appreciate within it. So uh, death's a funny thing. It has a lot of stages when you're dealing with it. it comes in waves, you know, like there's definitely like Little things that'll just set me off. Comes with the territory, you know, we lost. We lost an OG. I'm super tired. It's been a long ass day, just emotionally. I stopped and got Guadalajara Grill, which is a house staple. Where the fucking floor lights? Look around Trey's home, which is essentially this old ass home with all this history. And Trey's collected all this art, and, you know, walked through different cultures to appreciate them and understand them. And it's really inspiring, you know, there's not a single person in town that doesn't respect him. He does everything with honor. You know, it's just like almost to like a cornball degree. You know, you're like, geez, Trey. These cultures, the way that they deal with death is a lot different than, say, American culture. But, and you know, it's a lot of what he appreciated. So walking around his house and everything there is like a shrine to where he's been and what he's done and the accomplishments, uh, the mark that he left on people. We can only imagine places and people that ran into Trey one time. Probably still tell stories about him. You know, like my life moves so fast and it's weird how losing someone gives you permission in some way to slow everything down. So I have Trey to thank for that. You know, he told me days ago, take a break. That, that was forced. Don't think he needed to be so dramatic and die. So we're also at that point where everybody's just making these jokes. Cause Trey would have done that too. We're dealing with it, you know, we're processing it. And part of this whole shit, you know, life involves death. They're very much a part of each other. They require the other to exist. And me and Trey had a lot of talks about spirituality and living and death and the afterlife. And I don't worry, you know, I don't feel any kind of sadness for that. I just feel sadness for the loss. Part of that processing is to mourn. You have to mourn. You know, I've cried for fucking hours, days even, you know, like this whole drive up here, just tears. There also comes a time to celebrate. For a very specific amount of time, mourn Trey, which is ending because now it's about celebrating. You know, when I walk around his house, and I walk around this town, and I walk around my own feelings, there's a lot of insight, there's a lot of lessons, and, and Trey probably left me with more gifts than I even realized. It fucking really sucked. It's terrible. Like, I mean, I don't even know how to describe the feeling of losing one thing, but also appreciating that loss. Now being able to appreciate everything that there is, you know, that Trey gave me. So, but that's just where I am with it. I don't know. Yeah. Lots to think about, lots to ponder. Everybody's gonna leave in a couple of days. I don't know when the service is gonna be. Don't quite know what's going on with that. So Trey's always been like the dude that pushed me and believed in me. Giving him that painting idea, he was so fucking excited on the phone. I decided to just stay out here. I'm just gonna stay here, rent another Airbnb for like at least 10 days catch these vibes, celebrate and mourn my friend, take in whatever energy I can take in here, paint. I'm gonna finish the Meta God series here. There's a third installment. So I'm gonna finish that painting in Taos because I find that to be appropriate. Like I feel incredibly grateful that I can even just be here and come back here in a way that I can just go rent, you know, rent a place and stay here long enough to get my head straight around it. Not just have to jump back into the bullshit. You know, just eat the trauma. Life moves so fucking fast. You have to just eat it, digest it as fast as possible. I don't want to do that. Trey also told me one of the last things we talked about was, he's like, bro, I love the vlog. The Japan vlogs are blowing my mind. And he's like, gotta do that. He said, gotta do that more. He's like, your food too. You always find the best food. So, you know, probably take that advice. It's almost been forced. His passing has sort of forced it out of Taos. Regretfully, never came here and had Trey give us like an official Taos tour. Now it's like, I'm here. I'm gonna obviously go around and do some stuff while I'm here, while I try to paint and live. Yeah, obviously we're gonna eat every day. So I don't know what else to do. And the vlog is therapeutic at this point. This is real. Not about shoes, clothing, and bullshit. It's about losing, losing your fucking friend. <clears throat> this morning, we are actually going to get <laughs> a burrito from Lotta Burger at Blake's. 
I'd call it Blake's. Fuck, when me and Alex were broke, this is all I ate for breakfast and lunch. Doesn't say on here, but it was like $4 and some change. So, New Mexico, not really the pinnacle of healthy food, but there's some really fucking amazing food in Taos specifically, Santa Fe, Taos, so, um, yeah. The views are unbeatable, the colors, like it's super amazing place. There's not a lot going on. You know, it gets really boring uh, if you're looking for like entertainment, but if you're looking to get away and you're looking for spirituality and you're looking for just uh, nature to enjoy it, you don't really necessarily have to go hiking, can if you want to, but you can really enjoy um, something as simple as a sunset out here. So hot as shit, it's not really been hot yet, thank God, but in the next month or two, it's gonna be hot as fuck here. Brutal hot. If you've never been here, you don't even know about green chili, you should come here. It's not like anywhere else in the world. Green chili dog. They put it on everything and it's amazing. It's actually one of the easiest ways to diet because you could eat just like chicken or steak or eggs out here. And if you put green chilies on them, it kind of makes it amazing. It worked, it worked for me for a long time, but now I just don't care. Burritos are life right now. So it's definitely fucking beautiful. This is an earth ship, so everything is recycled. Like the water from like the toilet and wherever else gets used through the house, like an ecosystem. Oh, these views out here are gonna be. Very fortunate that I can do my work from here. Mostly, I can't, I can't uh, upload really, but I can paint and I can draw. And this is like the perfect place to do it. Seriously, it sucks. Like I think about it a lot. Like I've had a lot of friends pass in, in my lifetime. This has got to be the first time ever that I've been able to just pause life for the most part and just take a break and think about what it means and think about how I feel. And uh, that's really important to me right now. That's like pretty much everything to me right now. So uh, life just moves really fucking fast. Losing someone important to you is the only real time that I feel like you, without a doubt, should slow it all down. I feel very grateful, thank you very much to anyone who's bought anything for me, supported my art in any way, watched the vlog, like anything. It puts me right here in this place right now, which is literally everything to me. So, thank you for that. Um, yeah, but this is the morning out here. It's beautiful, of course, a little gray, but it's early. House. But I did hear a rumor about some internet in town. I heard that you can get some fiber optic shit, but the computer takes dongles. So I don't think I have a dongle for the hardwire calls, but we'll see. 